cry out to you, holy, holy, you are holy. Peace be with us. The delightful scent of your tender love envelops us, O Lord and God. And our souls are enlightened by the knowledge of your truth. We are made worthy to receive the manifestation of your beloved from heaven. And there may we give you thanks and praise you unceasingly in your crown church, full of all benefits and blessings. For you are Lord and Creator of all, Father and Son, Holy Spirit, forever. Amen. The worship and praise name of your glorious Trinity. May this incense be blessed which we are placing in your honor. And be for our pardon, O Creator of the delightful, scent and pleasing aromas, Lord of all, Father and Son, Holy Spirit, forever. Amen. May Christ satisfy you in His kingdom and accept your service by the grace of His compassion. Amen. Amen.
faculty is our Lord and God, that we may understand and savor the sweet sound of your life-giving and divine commands. Grant in your grace and in your mercies that we may reap benefit from them, love, hope, and salvation that befits both body and soul. Thus will we unceasingly sing a perpetual praise to you at all times, Lord of all, Father and Son, Holy Spirit, forever. Amen. Oh, the Apostle of Jesus Christ, his epistle to the Romans, my brethren, bless, O oh my Lord. May Christ instruct you in his holy teaching and make your end a fine presentation to your listeners. Amen. Why do you pass judgment on your brother? Or you, why do you despise your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So each of us shall give account of himself to God. Then let us no more pass judgment on one another, but rather decide never to put a stumbling block or hindrance in the way of a brother. I know and am persuaded in the Lord Jesus that nothing is unclean in itself, but it is unclean for anyone who thinks it is unclean. If your brother is being injured by what you eat, you are no longer walking in love. Do not let what you eat cause the ruin of one for whom Christ died. So do not let your good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not food and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. He who thus serves Christ is acceptable to God and approved by men. Let us then pursue what makes for peace and for mutual upbuilding. Do not, for the sake of food, destroy the work of God. Everything is indeed clean, but it is wrong for anyone to make others fall by what he eats. It is right not to eat meat or drink wine or do anything that makes your brother stumble. The faith that you have, keep between yourself and God. Happy is he who has no reason to judge himself for what he approves, but he who has doubts is condemned. If he eats because he does not act from faith, for whatever does not proceed from faith is sin. Amen. Glory be to the Lord of all. Let us pray. Peace be with us. May God, the Lord of all, strengthen your thoughts and purify your hymns to sing His glories by the grace of His mercy. Amen. Amen. Glory to the eternal mercies which sent you to us. O Christ, the light of the world and the eternal life of all forever. Amen. Amen. Make us wise, O Lord, in your law enlighten our faculties with your knowledge sanctify our souls in your truth and let us obey your words and to fulfill your commands at all times lord of all father and son holy spirit forever amen oh, enlighten the rational with the knowledge of your greatness Enlighten, my Lord, my thoughts, that I may meditate upon your holy and divine scriptures at all time, Lord of all. Father and Son, Holy Spirit, forever. Amen. Rightful saint, my Lord, which wafted from you at the moment when Mary the sinner poured the fragrant oil upon your head. May that be mixed with this incense which we are placing for your honor and for the pardon of our debts and sins, Lord of all. Father and Son, Holy Spirit, forever. So 
salvation. I cry out by day and by night before you. Let my prayer come before you. Incline your ear to my petition. I have been reckoned among those who go down the pit. I am like a man who has no help. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Are we also blind? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no guilt. But now that you say we see, your guilt remains. Truly, truly, I say to you, He who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the, the gatekeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of a stranger. This figure Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not heed them. I am the door. If, any, if anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hireling and not a shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hireling and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. As the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. 
and I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will heed my voice. So there shall be one flock and one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life, that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down for my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This charge I have received from my Father. There was again division among the Jews because of these words. Many of them said, He has a demon, and he is mad. Why listen to him? Others said, They are not the saying of one who has a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of a blind man? I mean, glory to Christ our Lord. Glory be to Christ our Lord. Let us all stand composed in faith and hope. Let us implore and say, Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Father of mercies and God of every consolation, we implore you. Lord, have mercy on us. Our Savior, our caretaker and provider for all, we implore you, Lord, have mercy on us. For the health of our Holy Fathers, Mar Thoma, the Metropolitan, and Marmari, the Bishop, and for all those in the same priestly service, we implore you, Lord, have mercy on us. Our Lord, in your grace, increase your peace and your tranquility within us, and have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. In Sabaru Sabrath Maria, Pagredem Shikha, with me a pira, Al Madba Kutsha. دخلت وورث خمسة كل النسقى رولي وعم لاخ يبي ولي قديش 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 مريا لها نخل مسكين ونزبان فغريد أمشي خاود ما يقيرا Praise to your glorious Trinity at all times and forever. Amen. May Christ, who was sacrificed for our salvation and commanded us to make a memorial of his death, burial, and resurrection, accept this sacrifice from our hands in his grace and mercy forever. Amen. Amen. Have been fulfilled for our salvation. May they be for the remission of the nation's iniquities, those who receive them by the grace and mercy of Christ forever. Amen. By your command, O Lord and God. Amen. Bless O my Lord. By your command, O Lord and God. the 
rays being set and arranged upon the altar of atonement until the second coming of our Lord from heaven to whom be glory at all times and forever. Amen. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, to the Holy Spirit. Upon the holy altar, let there be a remembrance of the Virgin Mary, the Mother of Christ. From everlasting to everlasting and forever. Amen. Apostles of the Son and friends of the only begotten, may they be and Michael is upon the holy altar with the just who triumph and the martyrs who wear crown. All the departed have fallen asleep in your home that you may raise them in glory by your glorious resurrection. Let us entrust our souls mutually to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. To you, O Lord, our God. To you, Lord God Almighty, do we beg and plead. Fulfill your grace in us. Make your gift overflow in our hands. And let your mercies and the compassion of your divinity be for the remission of the debts of your people and the forgiveness of the sins of the sheep of your flock, whom you have chosen for yourself in your grace and in your mercies, Lord of all, Father and Son, Holy Spirit, forever. of hands and receive the blessing. And grant unto us, my Lord, in your compassion that we may all together equally all the days of our lives please you and your divinity with the good work of righteousness, which may content and satisfy the glorious will of your Lordship. And may we be made worthy with the aid of your grace to lift up to you praise, honor, thanksgiving, and worship at all times, Lord of all, Father and Son, Holy Spirit, forever. all by his grace and mercy forever. Amen. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of all that is visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the firstborn of all creations, who was begotten from his Father, before all the ages, and was not made. True God from true God, of one essence with his Father, by whose hands the worlds were established, and everything was created, who for us humans, and for our salvation, descended from heaven, and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit, and became man, and was conceived and born of the Virgin Mary, and suffered and was crucified in the days of Pontius Pilate, and was buried and rose on the third day, as it is written, and ascended into heaven, and sat down at the right hand of his Father, and he will come again to judge the dead and the living, and one Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, 
the life-giving Spirit, and in one holy and apostolic universal Church, we confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and the resurrection of our bodies and life everlasting. Amen. May God, the Lord of all, be with us and in us all by His grace and mercy forever. Amen. Amen. Bless you, my Lord, my brothers. Pray for me. May Christ hear your prayers and be satisfied with your supplications and accept your oblation by His grace and mercies forever. Amen. Lord, the Lord of all, strengthen you to give praise in His glory. Let us pray. Peace be with us. Pray for the remembrance of our fathers, the patriarchs and bishops, and all priests and deacons, and monks and nuns and all the deceased who have left this world in the true faith our fathers and brothers all our sons and daughters and all faithful kings the friends of christ prophets and apostles and all martyrs and confessors who are here and those of every land, that God who has crowned them in the resurrection from the dead may grant us good hope with them and a portion and inheritance and life in the kingdom of heaven. Whom our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, you were well pleased and reconciled to forgive the sins of all men. Amen. Bless, O oh my Lord. Salvation, Corban, as offered for all the living and the dead. May it be accepted from me, I, the sinner, before the awesome seed of your greatness, O oh Lord, with confidence. Amen. Bless, O oh my Lord. May Christ confirm your word and accept the fruits of your lips and may he pardon the debts and sins of all who listen to you. Amen. And may this oblation be accepted with unveiled faces and may it be sanctified by the word of God and by the Holy Spirit salvation and life forever and ever in the kingdom of heaven by the grace of Christ. Bless O oh my Lord, bless O oh my Lord, bless O oh my Lord, my brothers, pray for me. May Christ hear your prayers, may Christ receive your oblation, and may Christ adorn your priesthood in the kingdom of heaven. And may he be pleased with this sacrifice which you offer for yourself and for us and for the whole world, which looks for and awaits his grace and his mercy forever. Amen. That with perfect love and with true faith we may administer your gift towards us. Amen. Bless so oh my Lord. May we lift up to you praise, honor, thanksgiving and worship now and at all times and forever and ever. Presbyters and deacons, and the whole company of the departed from 
from the assembly of the church and for the life and tranquility of the world and for the crown of the year that it may be blessed and perfected in your grace and for every child of the church who is worthy of the reception of this oblation which is before you and for all your servants and handmaidens who stand before you at this hour for all of them and for all of us may the oblation be accepted forever amen let us confess beseech and implore the lord in purity and contrition reverently stand and look at what is taking place in the consecration of the fearful mysteries the priest has drawn me to pray that by his mediation peace may increase among you cast down your pride and lift up your thoughts to heaven watchfully and diligently ask and beseech at this moment and let no one dare to speak Whosoever prays, let him pray in his heart. In silence and in fear, stand and pray. Peace be with us. Deem me worthy of your body and blood, O my Lord. In the same way, by your grace, make me worthy of confidence before you on the day of judgment. Amen. Amen. In the worshipped and, gl and glorious name of your glorious Trinity, may this incense be blessed, which we offer to your honor and for absolution forever. Amen. Amen. Delightful incense, O our Lord and God, offered to you by us, before your holy altar and your glorious temple please you, and may it be for the joy of your holy name and the pardon of your servants and flock, Father and Son and Holy Spirit, forever. Strengthen you to continually do his will forever. May Christ make your priesthood shine in the kingdom of heaven. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and all times and forever and ever.
spiritual seraphim bestow adoration to your Lordship. Amen. Bless O oh my Lord. All shouting and praising without ceasing and calling one to another and saying,
from the dead and for new life in the kingdom of heaven with all of those who have pleased you and for this whole great and marvelous plan for us we give you thanks and praise you unceasingly in your church redeemed by the precious blood of your Christ with expressive mouths and unveiled faces with expressive mouths and unveiled faces Amen Giving name now and at all times and forever and ever.
lifted up my eyes toward you, O you who dwell in the heavens, as the eyes of the servants are toward their masters, as the eyes of the handmaid are toward her mistress, so our eyes are toward you, O Lord our God, until you have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy upon us. I have washed my hands in purity, and I have gone round your altar, O Lord. Amen. Our prayer, our petition, please you, O Lord and God, and the fragrance of our pleasing sense before your satisfaction, as the sense of Aaron the priest in the tabernacle, restore our souls with our bodies, and be reconciled to creation because of your abundant mercies. O Creator of pleasing scents and sweet spices, Lord of all, Father and Son, Holy Spirit, forever. Amen. Perfume us, our Lord and God, with the pleasing scent of your sweet-smelling love. Wash us therein from the grime of sin, O Good Shepherd, who came searching for us, found us who were lost and rejoices in our return. Forgive my faults and my sins, intentional and unintentional, in your grace and in your mercy. Amen. Bless, O my Lord. Bless, O my Lord. Bless, O my Lord, may the mercy of your grace, our Lord and our God, draw us near to these glorious, holy, life-giving and divine mysteries, though we are not worthy. In truth, O my Lord, we are not worthy. Have pity on us. to your Lordship at all times for it. Amen. Amen. Indeed, the living and life-giving bread that descended from heaven and gives life to the world in its totality. Those who eat of it will not die and who partake of it will be forgiven and saved and through it will live forever. unspeakable forever. Amen. Amen. It's true faith in your name, O Lord, we draw near to these holy mysteries. In your mercy we break, and in your compassion we sign the body and blood of your beloved, our Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit forever. Amen. The precious blood is signed with the life-giving body of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit forever. forgiving blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit forever. Amen. See that it is I myself. See that it is I myself. I am the bread which 
us worthy, O Lord and God, to stand always before you without fault, with pure hearts and unveiled faces, and in that confidence that you have granted us all in your mercy, we call together upon you and thus say... Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgave our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Indeed, our Lord and our God, we plead and implore the immensity of your compassion. Do not, O Lord, do not, O Lord, lead us into temptation, but save and deliver us from the evil one and his hope. From the evil one and his hope. Yours are the kingdom, the power, the strength, the greatness, and the authority in heaven and on earth now and at all times and forever and ever. Amen. Peace be with you. With you and your spirit. Holy is fit for the Holy Ones living in a In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Our beloved fathers, deacons, monks and nuns, our beloved congregation, those who are present in this holy church and those who are watching us through live streaming, may the Almighty Jesus Christ of Nazareth bless you guide you, protect you, and deliver you from every evil tribulation. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. The gospel of today is from the gospel according to St. John, chapters 9 and 10, and chapter 9, verses 39 all the way till the end of the chapter and then chapter 10 from 1 to 21. The Lord is trying to say to every single human being, he's trying to say to every single human being, this is not to the Christians, this is to every human being that has ever come to the face of this earth and will ever come. We need to understand one thing very clear. Now whether people accept this, whether people believe in this, whether people confess it, acknowledge it or not, the truth will always be the truth. Now Jesus Christ is God revealed in the flesh. Now what does that mean in a very simple term where us humans can 
relate to and comprehend. God means he's the creator of everything and everyone, visible and invisible. So Jesus Christ is the creator of heaven, angels, every galaxy, everything that came to existence and everything on this earth and the crown of this creation, the human race or the human being. Now, in this sense, Jesus Christ came for every human being. He is not limited to the Christians. Those who believed in him became Christians, but the Lord is still waiting for the whole world to come back to him. This is the truth. This is the truth. The gospel of today is chapter 9 and 10, but I'll take it to 11 as well. Now, the gospel according to St. John works in three, three lots of chapters because there is a miracle or a sign that takes up three chapters. The first chapter is an intro, an introduction to the sign. The second chapter is the sign itself. And the third chapter is the result or the fruits of that sign. Now, when you look at chapter nine, the Lord Jesus has healed someone who was born blind from the mother's womb. The Lord spat on the ground and made mud and applied it to that man's eyes and said, go and wash in that pond called Shilucha or Shiluho, which means messenger. So he opens the eyes of the blind men. Chapter 10, I am the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. My sheep hear my voice and follow me. They do not follow the voice of the stranger, of a stranger, but they follow the voice of the good shepherd. Chapter 11, the Lord raises Lazarus from the dead. So when you put nine, 10 and 11, you come to this truth. And what is that truth? I came to judge. My word will judge those who rejected in the end. The Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd as Psalm 23 mentions, he leads me to green pastures and still waters. He leads me to green pastures and still waters. What is the word? My sheep hear my voice. What precedes the word is the voice. I'm talking to you now words. You, you cannot see the word. The first thing you do or you're able to do is hear the voice of the word. So the very first thing that comes to our ears is the voice of Christ. When we hear his voice, accept what we just heard, put it in the depths of our hearts and believe in what we just heard, then the word who is the logos, who is God revealed in the flesh will come and reveal himself to you and I. We cannot find God. It is God who finds us. 
We cannot get to God. It is God who gets to us. We cannot climb up to him, but he can come down to us. It is the good shepherd who seeks the lost sheep. It is not the sheep that seeks the shepherd because the sheep without the shepherd, it is lost and eventually dead. Now the Lord is saying, my word is the light of the world. I am the light of the world. This man in chapter nine was born blind from the womb of his mother. Now this blindness, we can look at it in two different ways, physical and spiritual. But the issue, the physical, when you compare it to the spiritual is not much because the Lord did open the eyes of this blind man physically he did however afterwards death blinded those eyes once again the physical eyes the Lord opened the physical eyes of this blind man but when he died the eyes were shut one more time and became absolutely blind again but there is another blindness which the Lord came for specifically the spiritual blindness the physical blindness is temporal in fact there are so many people that came to this world blind yet they see more than me and you they know their way they know exactly where things are and in fact they see beyond the temporal realm because they have an eye that has no limit to its sight called the spiritual eye. Yet there are so many people with their eyes opened yet perceive nothing. They cannot tell their right hand from their left hand. Just being physically with an open eye that doesn't mean you see. Just because you see physically, that doesn't mean you really see. Our eyes are opened, yet we do so many things wrong. Our eyes are opened, yet we walk in so many dark alleys. Our eyes are opened, yet we believe in the lies of the world and follow through with it. Yet our eyes are open and we sell Jesus Christ every single day of our life yet our eyes the physical eyes are open but spiritually we are we are blind and as long as long as we remain spiritually blind we're dead we're dead the end is the grave but it's not the temporal grave it's the permanent death the separation of the spirit from its creator god who is jesus christ of Nazareth all glory to his holy name the Lord came opened the eyes of this blind man when you look at that story true story what happens this man was blind from the mother's womb the disciples stopped the Lord and asked him they said whose sin is it the parents or this blind man for him to be born this way Lord he said neither the parents nor him but he's been placed here for the glory of God the Lord makes mud by spitting on the ground that is just telling us he is the same God who created Adam because Adam was made out of mud the word Adam is Edamtha in the original language. Edamtha means red mud. Dam in Hebrew, Syriac, Aramaic means blood. Edamtha means red mud. So God created Adam from mud. That God came in the flesh and he said, I am the same God out of mud. I'll create eyes for this blind man. But the question, now here we need to really take heed and pay attention. So many people, 
They search for God with their intellectual capacity. Using their head, using, using their intellect, they are seeking God, thinking they might find God with their intellect. This man was blind. Now the Lord Jesus made mud and applied it to this blind man, eyes. Now if we use our heads, and not only this, then he tells him, the Lord tells him, get up and walk to a pond which is several hundred meters away from where he was sitting. He tells him, go and walk. And if I use my head, I'll say, what's wrong with you, Jesus? Are you okay? Are you serious, bro? What's up? What's happening? Hello, I'm blind. Anybody home? The Lord will say, yes, I know. So Lord, is this the way you open my eyes? The Lord will say, exactly, yes. I'm already blind, Lord. So you take mud and stick it on my eyes? He says, yes. Well, thank you very much, Lord. Even if I had 1% of eyesight, thanks to your mud, it's gone. Now I am 100% blind. The Lord says, exactly, you are, because you are 100% blind. Now I want you to get up and walk to the pond and wash your face there. If we use our head, our intellectual capacity will lead us to logic. This realm, the ultimate is logic. The ultimate is the natural realm. Now the logic says, everything the Lord is saying doesn't make sense in my mind, in my head. Everything is contradictive. But my sheep hear my voice and follow that voice. Get up and wash your face. I am sure when that blind man walked, people made fun of him. People have seen him for years sitting on the sideway begging and everybody knew he was blind from birth. They knew him for years. It's a little town, everybody knows everybody. So when they saw him all of a sudden, after all these years, being normal every single day, comes and sits in this spot and begs for help, all of a sudden they see him, his face is all muddy. They said, poor thing, he is not only blind, now he is a nutcase, a lunatic, he's playing with mud and putting it all over his face. Who does that? A mentally unfit person. So as he was walking, people ridiculed him. People made fun of him. People maybe told him off, but it did not matter to him because he listened to the voice of the Good Shepherd and he followed through with that voice. When you hear the Lord's voice, and follow through with it, you will see the glory of God. He went and washed, regained his eyesight. When his eyes were opened, the closest people to him denied him. His own parents, they said, there is something wrong with our son. When they were questioned by the authorities of the Israelite nation, they said, looks like he's lost his, his mind, his brain. He's been blind for so long. Now it got to his head. He is acting, behaving, talking like a lunatic. The very parents of this son went against him. You see, the moment your eyes and our eyes are opened by the Almighty God, the closest people to us will be our enemies. They'll go against you. And they'll start calling you names and pointing the finger at you and saying, look at you, shame on you. You think you're a saint, you're a nothing. You think you're something special, you are nothing. 
Look at you. What a show off. You're trying to be the best. Oh, you're praying now. Oh, wow. So you're a monk. You're a nun. So the family is nothing. You're, you're the only one who knows Jesus. Yes. Are you trying to tell us that you are the best of the best? Shame on you. They will ridicule you, but you need to follow through with the voice of the Lord. When his eyes were opened, his people rejected him, but someone embraced him, Jesus. The Holy Bible says, and Jesus came where that blind man who regained his sight was. Jesus found him. When the Lord open your eyes, it is then and then only you will understand who Jesus Christ is. Because no one can teach you about the Lord except the Lord. When the church becomes spiritually blind, turns into a worldly institution, connects with the world makes deals with the world, becomes a place of buying and selling, an enterprise. And then the church gets measured according to how much the church has with wealth, properties, prestige, and power. Totally lost the mark Totally lost the mark. The church needs to always listen to the voice of her good shepherd. The moment the church lose track of that voice, the church is blind. When we walk in darkness, we can't see what is coming our way. Everything is hidden. Everything is obscure but when the light shines forth everything falls into clarity everything makes sense you see when when the Lord opens your eyes spiritually I'm talking about when the Lord touches you in the depths of your, of your soul. When he opens your eyes and you start talking, do not be shocked when people misunderstand you. Do not be shocked when people go against you. Do not be shocked when people persecute you. Do not be shocked when people call you names because their eyes are not opened. My beloved, it is not what you know that gives you the insight. It is what God has done for you that gives you that insight. So many people are educated, not only in the, in the, in the religious field. There are so many scientists. There are so many professors in biology, in chemistry, in physics, yet they are spiritually blind to the core after studying all their life and becoming professors in that field, absolute experts, they come back and speak the ultimate ignorance of all ignorances and say, there is no God. So is this the knowledge that you gained, my dear friend, as a scientist, as a professor? Stephen Hawkins, the number one physicist in the world, died in a wheelchair the only thing was working in his body was the vocal cords. You see how the Lord is mighty? Do you see how Jesus Christ is always in control? The number one physicist in the world tried to find out how the universe came about through physics. Blind, ignorant, all his knowledge was childish at the end 
What did your knowledge do for you? Placed you in a wheelchair, only vocal cords, nothing moves in his body, nothing. And he died still trying to discover through physics how this universe came about. And he said while he was living in the flesh, I will do everything in my power to find out through physics how this universe came about. I will find and discover it, my dear friends. He rotted in the grave and he will never find out. But now I'm sure he did. Because when he crossed to the other side, he said, how blind I was, Lord, all my life. I denied your existence, but now, which is too late, I found out it is God who created the universe, not a physics formula. Blind. Speaking so childish. <sighs> Mother Nature created you through a Big Bang. Man, I'll Big Bang you if you don't wake up to yourself. With a red belt in karate, scissor, scissor cut. Oops, got us all back. <laughs> the Lord, His voice. See, I came to open the blind men's eyes, chapter 9. How was I able to do that? Because I am the good shepherd. The Lord said, All those who came before me were robbers and thieves because they did not walk through the door. They jumped from the fences and the windows, but I'm the only one who walked through the door. And for us not to be seen as thieves, we need to walk through the front door. If we break in, we thieves. The Lord never breaks in. He knocks and it's up to us to open the door. See that door, he said there is the gatekeeper or the doorkeeper. The doorkeeper is the Holy Spirit. The door is the Lord himself. It is the door of prophecies. It is the door of the word. What is a prophecy? The word of God. What is the word of God? Law. Law. See, God gave at the beginning two laws and the two you can put them into one. Love God with all of your heart and love your neighbor like yourself. But during the pandemic, they said, jab yourself and love your neighbor. Forget about God. And this came from church leaders. Oh, what a feeling, Corona. From church leaders. Jab yourself and show an act of love for your neighbor. My dear friend, church leader, what about God? What happened? Oh, the church has gone blind, has it? Because did not wish to listen to the voice of the shepherd the good shepherd and listened to the voice of the enemy Satan blind it takes God to open your eyes and my eyes as church leaders not our PhD in theology so many educated yet so many lost church leaders have PhDs upon PhDs yet blind talking childishly and foolishly because they did not wish to follow the voice of the Good Shepherd. They remained blind. All their education led them to one place. Ignorance, foolishness, childish behavior. 
It takes the Lord. It takes the Lord. It takes the Lord to bring out of the illiterate wisdom. It takes the Lord to bring out of the weak mightiness. It takes the Lord to bring out of a nothing everything. It takes the Lord to do that. Not Notre Dame, University, Oxford. They can all get lost. And pardon the French, not. My beloved, how can I listen to the voice of the Lord? How can I follow Him? The first thing we need to do is acknowledge we are sinners. The first thing. Lord, I come to you today confessing wholeheartedly I have sinned against you. I have broken your laws. I have broken your word and your heart. Today I am coming saying I am nothing and you are everything. Lord Jesus, I can't get to you. Please, with your infinite mercy, with your infinite grace and love, come to me and lead me to you. You are the good shepherd seeking that lost sheep in the wilderness of this world. The world current has taken me away from you. I drifted so far and wide. I lost my track. I can't come back to you, Lord Jesus. Bring me back to you, I beg you, Lord. I've tried it my way for so many years. I've tried it my way for so long. And every time I've done it my way, I failed. I failed. I failed miserably. Don't do it your way. Let the Lord do it for you. Entrust Him with everything you have. Entrust Him with all of you. All of you. Don't leave no portion. Don't ever be greedy when it comes to the Lord Jesus. Be generous. Give you all to Him. And say, Lord, take me. Break me and make me. Wound me and heal me. Show me the true me, the real me. When the Lord takes you in that desert far away and teaches you through His school of thought, when the Lord takes you through His school, not Notre Dame, not Oxford, the school of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You know, one day Jesus was walking and then John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Two of His disciples, of John the Baptist's disciples, they followed Jesus. Since they heard their teacher is acknowledging Him being the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, they say, well, our teacher is the man of God. He's a prophet. He knows what he's talking about. Let us go and see where Jesus is and who Jesus is. When the Lord realized they were following him, he stops and look what the Lord says to them. He turns around and says, what can I do for you? What do you want? Why are you following me? You know what they say, what they said? They said, Lord, where do you stay? We want to know where you live. Where do you live? Now, the Lord is life. I need to live Him. I need to live Him. I need to live Him. I've said this so often and I'll say it again. Do we ever think before we breathe? Never. Do we ever count how many times we breathed in a day? Never. Why don't we think about it? Yet this is the source of our very life. If I don't breathe, if I stop breathing, I'm dead. What is dead? I never exist. I'll come into a non-existence, gone, finished, never to be seen. 
Yet this very source of my life, I never pay attention to it. I never think about it. I never count how many times I've breathed. Why? Because it is life. And when it comes to life, you can only do one thing with life is live it, not study it, not think about it, not chase it. You just live it. Christ is your life and my life. Don't study him. Don't go and say, this professor came and told me this is the meaning of this verse and this is the passage. I send my assignment to get my PhD. Listen. I'll take you to the desert and bring your PhD with you. Pope, Cardinal, Bishop, bring your PhDs with you. Let's go to the desert and let me see what your PhD is going to do for you. I'm not saying education is not important. Don't get me wrong. But one thing I'm saying, education without application is a waste of time. You study about the Lord, but you never chose to live with the Lord. You're a total stranger to the Lord. You cannot lead his flock. You will destroy his flock. You're blind. And a blind leading the blinds, they both fall into the ditch. You need a leader that has eyes that are opened by the Lord, not by himself. By the Lord. By the Lord. Live the Lord. Every morning you wake up, your eyes are open. My daughter, you're my daughter here. If you're married, your husband is next to you, you open your eyes. Don't worry about your husband. You're probably hearing what you're saying, but he's pretending that he's asleep. Naughty boy. You wake up, you open your eyes, you say, good morning, Habibi. He's thinking you're talking to him. You're talking to the Lord. He is the man. He's the man of all men. Good morning, Habibi. Habibi. Good morning, my love. I thank you for this blessed morning, for a new life for a fresh start, for a new page, still empty. Yesterday's page was filled with so many things I was not proud of. Yesterday's page was filled with so many errors that I was ashamed of. Thank you, my man, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you, my dad. Thank you, my father, my mother, my friend. Thank you, thank you for giving me another day to give me a new start, a new life, a new page. I can write history once again. Today, help me, Lord. I write everything right. I don't want any more errors. I don't want any more mistakes. Help me. Good morning. Thank you for this new day. And then say to him, thank you, Lord, from the bottom of my heart for giving me this husband who's a pain in the neck. I couldn't ask for a better man. Now you have to sugarcoat it. <laughs> now you have to mean it, my daughter. Thank the Lord for that man that he's given you. He's a blessing, even though sometimes he's a pain, but that blessing sometimes can only come through pain. You see, we can't be blessed with good things always. Sometimes we must be blessed through hardships through pains. Thank the Lord for what you have. Thank the Lord for the family, regardless what they have done and what they are doing. Pray for them. Pray for them. Pray for them. Pray for them. Thank the Lord for that little room. You're living in a granny flat. Thank him. Don't be sad 
don't be upset and saying my friend is living in a mansion and I'm living in a little tiny granny flat thank the Lord let the Lord make that granny flat a mansion for you don't build it with your own hands let God build it for you for if the Lord does not build a house it is vanity for the builders to go and build it if the Lord does not protect a city it is in vanity for people to stand and protect it it is God who builds it is God who protects it is God this God his name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth forever and ever and evermore glory honor worship and thanksgiving to Jesus Christ of Nazareth the love of my life the love Men be warriors for the Lord. Don't be weak. Love the Lord. Love the Lord. Love the Lord. Even when he is difficult, love him. Even when you're praying and he's not answering you, love him. Even when you're asking for something and it goes totally the other way, love him. Love him. Say something, I'm giving up on you. You naughty boys and girls. Love the Lord. His voice in the book of Revelation, John the Beloved says, like many waters. Water soothes, water revives, water comforts, water cleanses, water heals. His voice is like many waters. I'm hurt. The voice of the Lord comes, all of a sudden that hurt is gone. I'm feeling down, I'm uplifted, I'm lost, I'm found. The voice of the Lord heals my beloved, heals. Sit in silence sometimes and contemplate. Remember, remember, remember this. Every time you come so close to giving up, every time you come so close to calling it a day, every time you come so close to say, what's the point of going on? I've had enough. Remember. Remember this, when I get thrown in the deep and my entire body is submerged underwater, the only thing that is sticking above water is my head. The enemy comes and laughs at me and says, ah, look at you, you're dead, you're gone, you're finished. Look at you, you're so gone, so deep, so far say to the enemy listen for as long as my head is above water i'm still alive and everything is good nothing is lost nothing is lost for as long as my head is above water i am still living and kicking and let me tell you enemy saint paul teaches me in his epistle to the ephesians chapter 5 the church is the body of christ you are the church you are those souls who are baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You are the church. 
the church is the body of Christ and Christ is the head of this body. So who is your head and who is my head? Who is our head? Christ. We are the church, we are the body and Christ is the head to this body. Guess what? Where is our body now? And ascended and sat down at the right hand of the Father in the heaven of all heavens. Our head is in the heaven of all heavens. Can anyone, can any power bring the head of Christ underwater? Impossible. For as long as our head is above water, say to Satan, -na 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 -na. I'm living. You may have made me fall. You may, you may have made me slip and slide away. But guess what? My head is Christ and that head lives forever. I receive the breath of life from the head, not the body. I receive oxygen from the head, not the body. It is my source of life is my head who is Christ Jesus. For as long as he lives, the body lives. Nothing is lost. Just come back. Come back from Star City Casino and say goodbye and come to the church. Come back from those dark alleys in the city. Come out of there and come to the light. Come back from wherever you were trying to go and turn away and face the Lord Jesus and say, Lord, I'm coming today brokenhearted. I'm coming today fully naked, sinful, absolutely blind. Open my eyes. Oh, good shepherd. When he opens your eyes, he raises you from the dead, Lazarus. When he gives you that spiritual insight, the grave cannot contain you anymore. For you are now living in him, not in you, in him. And as long as you live in him, there is no grave. Lazarus has to come. He needs to come out of that grave and he must come out of that grave because the grave cannot contain Jesus, therefore cannot contain everyone who believes in him. The grave are for those who rejected the voice of the Logos. That word that saved the repentant soul, the very word will judge those who rejected him. I did not come to judge, but to save. But today he says, I came to judge. Because my word is sharper than a double-edged sword. Double-edged means if you believe in the word, the sword will set you free. You know, in the good old days where they used to use swords and knives to fight, that sword they used to fight the enemy with and the same sword they used to set free their own uh, soldiers, their own army. When one of your friends is captured, how do you undo, how do you cut those ropes which they've tied him with? By the sword. But the very sword who set you free is the very sword who's gonna kill the one who becomes an enemy. The sword for those who accepted Jesus set them free, the sword is his word. But the sword who is his word for those who rejected him, they will be perished by the sword. They will be judged. Do not be judged by the Lord, but rather saved by him. Amen. Man, love the Lord. Today, to so many beloved Christians in the world, was Palm Sunday. So we'd like to wish a very blessed uh, Palm Sunday to all our beloved Christians who celebrated it today. For us, we will be celebrating that next week. We follow the old calendar exactly like my face, very old. Like that little uh, girl who was holding her mom's hand and walking and she saw me. She said, Mama, Mama, Santa. <laughs> I said, Ho, 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 Merry Christmas. <laughs> we'll be celebrating that next week. We pray the old mighty Jesus Christ of Nazareth, 
unifies the date of resurrection, where all Christians come into unity and uh, unify this day. And every, all of us celebrate his resurrection on one day. The Lord died once, was buried once, and rose once. It's, uh, it's, and honestly, it's a very um, sad thing for Christendom to do, to celebrate his resurrection twice. But we pray the, the Almighty Jesus unifies this day very, very soon. Um, let us bow our heads, ask the Lord for forgiveness, and make us worthy to come forth and receive him in the truth, in his body and blood. Amen. Our good God and full of mercy, our good God and full of mercy, whose grace and mercy is poured upon all. Pour, my Lord, the compassion of the delightfulness of your love upon your servants, and again transform them in the hope of renewal to the life of repentance. Renew in them your Holy Spirit, by whom they are sealed for the day of salvation. Purify them by your compassion from all flesh and spiritual blemishes. And assure the hope of their faith by the aid of your grace and instill the walks of their behavior in the paths of righteousness. Please them along with the saints in your kingdom by the assurance of the hope of their faith in the adoption as your children and in the joy of your absolving mysteries. Empower them by the aid of your mercies to observe your commandments and fulfill your will, to confess, worship, and praise your holy name, the Lord of all, Father and Son, and Holy Spirit forever. Amen. May the Lord Jesus bless you, bless all your loved ones, give you the strength to carry on and face the currents of the world by the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the one and only. Amen. Amen. Can't hear you. Amen. Can't hear you. Amen. Sydney, give me thunder. I used to work in the Commonwealth Bank. And um, I used to work at Blacktown. Uh, I, I was in their branch networks. I, I ended up being a branch manager. Uh, my expert side is uh, finance and management. <laughs> so um, mortgages and also uh, management as well. Anyway, I used to give uh, financial advice. Now I give spiritual advice. Same principle, different colors. Um, so I used to work at Blacktown the Commonwealth Bank in Blacktown. And um, the manager came. Uh, I was an assistant manager. It was a big branch at the time, good old days. Some of you were not born <laughs> yet. And then he came, he said, um, Sydney Kings and I don't know, another team, basketball, they're playing at Hombush. And he said, I've got two tickets. A friend of mine was going to come and he canceled on me the last minute. And would you like to come with me? I've got the ticket. You don't have to pay for it. I was excited. I've never seen a stadium, like an enclosed stadium was big, massive. I walked in, I said, whoa, look at this. I could took maybe 5,000, maybe more seated, all enclosed at Hombush. And the first time ever I'm watching them playing live. So this guy with the big microphone and the thundering uh, sound, Sydney, give me thunder. And everybody was, dup, 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 dup. till now I remember it, Sydney, give me thunder. But we should be making a thunder for the Lord Jesus, not the uh, basketball teams. <laughs> All right, wonderful. A um, couple of announcements. Um, well, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, next Sunday is Palm Sunday for the old calendar, those who follow the old calendar. So next Sunday it is Palm Sunday. So next Sunday, 6 p.m., celebrating the Holy Mass and a small... Um, also a festivity of the um, Palm Sunday. So he'll come, we'll give you some branches and we'll go for a walk and come back with some praise. So I hope to see you next Sunday as well. Um, we have um, the Good Friday. It's going to be Friday the 14th of April. At 6 p.m., we are having a contemplative prayer night in three languages, in English, in Arabic, and in Assyrian. Um, I, 
I hope and I wish to see you on Friday the 14th of April at 6 p.m. Um, actually, Thursday before it, which is the 13th of April, the Thursday, 13th of April, at 6 p.m., we are having the prayers of washing the feet of the, the disciples' feet. So if you'd like to join us, although it's going to be in Aramaic, but uh, that's Veronica, by the way. She's laughing. She's my sweetheart. Um, so Thursday, 13th of April at 6 p.m., we're having the uh, prayers of uh, washing the disciples' feet. It's going to be in Aramaic. If you'd like to come and listen to it, it's uh, beautiful. The Lord's language. So that's Thursday, 6 p.m. And then Friday, the 14th of April, 6 p.m., will be the contemplative uh, prayer night for the Good Friday. Um, let us come and share the passion of our Lord on that blessed night. And then Saturday, the 15th of April, uh, the first Holy Mass service will be held at 7 p.m. Um, we'll be celebrating that um, on Saturday, the 15th of April, 7 p.m. And then and the 16th, which is the Sunday Resurrection, there will be two Masses, one at 9 a.m. in Assyrian and then 6 p.m. like tonight in English. The Divine Heart Sunday School, and for those of you who are not aware, we do have a Sunday school in the evenings. goes hand in hand with the Holy Mass service. So if you have children from the ages of 5 to 16, you can bring them with you. And our beloved teachers will look after them and teach them while you are focused on the Holy Mass service. So the Divine Heart Sunday School will be going on a break from tomorrow, Monday, 3rd of April, coming back on Sunday, the 23rd of April. So from tomorrow, Sunday school is going on a break, coming back on Sunday, the 23rd of April. Um, Teens for Christ, we have another program for Teens for Christ. They're going on a spiritual camp in July from the 14th to the 16th, Friday the 14th to Sunday the 16th of July. If you're, if you're interested in um, registering your children from the ages of 12 to 18, Please do see Father George. This is Father George, the good-looking Father George. So please see Father George to um, enroll your, um, your children from the ages 12 to 18 to attend this spiritual camp in July, Friday the 14th to Sunday the 16th. Youth ministry, a reminder again. The first meeting will be held on Saturday this month, the 22nd of April, at 10.30 a.m. If you are 18 years of age plus, my beloved sons and daughters, if you are 18 plus, I'm encouraging you to join our youth ministry. The first meeting will be held here at the church on Saturday, the 22nd of April at 10.30 a.m. sharp. I am looking forward to being with you on that blessed day. To know more information, you can either see Father George or Father Daniel who's here with us as well, um, to, get, to get to receive more information about it. Please keep this intention in your prayers because we're in the process of trying to build a primary and a high school. So uh, pray for this intention for the Lord's will to be done in it. So uh, we've already started the process, but we always pray, Lord, let your will be done, not our will, but yours. So please keep this in your prayers. Lastly, um, I don't know if we can put the uh, Trinity Rehab um, that, there you go, bit small, that's it, beautiful. We are in the process of establishing a rehabilitation center. You know, people that have uh, drug addictions, alcohol, gambling, and other uh, emotional sort of um, impacts in their life. We're in the process of establishing this rehab called Trinity Rehab. Now, at this stage, we are seeking financial support. Uh, we are going everywhere, knocking at every door, and asking the Lord's grace to be, to be bestowed on this intention in order for it to be brought into wishing. All I'm asking, if you can, in whichever way, form, or shape, to support us financially, uh, that dollar means a lot. And every, every um, money that you contribute, it is a tax-deductible donation. 
goes to a charity, which is a tax recipient. So you'll be issued with a tax receipt and you can claim it on your tax returns. Please, please, I'm also asking, I'm only asking if you could share this information with all the people that you know. You, I'm sure you have Facebooks, you have Instagrams, you have TikTok, Wikwok, Nicknock, Wokwok. So whatever social media platforms you have, whatever people you know, please, if you could share it and ask your people to also, if they can contribute, and if they can also share it with their people that they know. The more we have, the merrier it is, and the easier this project comes into fruition before we know it. I know, and you know, that a lot of young men and women struggle with drugs, struggle with gambling, struggle with alcoholism, and it is an absolute, absolute struggle, and it's on the increase by the day. We need to reach out for as many people that we can help. For the Holy Bible says, if you can bring one person back, there is rejoicing in heaven. One person. We, if we can't help the whole world, let us at least help one person. This will put a big smile on our Heavenly Father's face. So I'm asking for your help. You know people, uh, tell them about it. There is flyers in the foyer. There's a table on the side in the foyer. Please go and, and pick a flyer and share it uh, with all the people that you know and uh, because we are seeking financial support um, in order to make it possible. It is going to be open for all people. We will not differentiate what your religious background is, what color, what race you are, because this is helping people that are struggling with addictions. It doesn't matter who you are and what you are. It is open for everyone. However, it will also be Christian based. Man, I'm going to put the biggest icon of the Lord Jesus and the entry. So everybody sees the Lord is looking at them. And any and every Christian that comes with a struggle, I'm telling you, it is going to be a Christian base. We will have a church in this rehab. There will be services done, Holy Mass services done. There will be Holy Bible sessions done and then plus some other physical work to be reconnected to Mother Nature. We're seeking a place slightly distant from the, uh, the city life. Oh my goodness, this city life, man. Ah, We'll take you where the sheep and the goats and the cows go and mm, we're gonna take you there. To the lush green areas away from the city. Reconnect to Mother Nature, reconnect with your Lord once again and receive that rehab. Because the ultimate counselor, the ultimate psychologist, the ultimate psychiatrist, the ultimate doctor is the love of our life, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. When you receive his word, there is no greater rehabilitation than the word of God. Amen. Amen. So please share it and let's make it happen together. God bless you and I shall see you by, by the grace of God next Sunday again. Until then, may the Lord always be with you. Bless you and protect you in his mighty name. Amen. Let us pray, peace be with us. The grace of the Holy Spirit be with you, with us, and with all who receive him in the kingdom of heaven forever. Amen. With you, with us, and with all who receive him in the kingdom of heaven, give glory to the living God. Glory be to
Bless her, my Lord. May the gracious gift of our life giver, the Lord Jesus Christ, be consummated in all of us by his grace and mercy. Forever and ever. Amen. Brethren, receive the body of the Son, says the
participate in these glorious, holy, life-giving and divine mysteries. Let us all unanimously thank and glorify God who has given them. Glory be to Him for His indescribable. at all times and is fitting in every moment to thank, adore and praise the awesome name of your majesty. For you made the weak race of mortal men worthy, O Lord, to proclaim your holiness with spiritual beings, to participate in the gift of your mis mysteries, to enjoy the sweetness of your words and to lift up song of praise and thanks be given to your sublime divinity at all times, O Lord of all, Father and Son, Holy Spirit, forever. Amen. Bless so my Lord. Our God, our Lord, our King, our Savior, our life giver, and the forgiver of our sins, who has made us worthy in His grace and mercies, to receive his precious and sanctifying body and blood. Grant us to please him in our words and deeds, and in our thoughts and actions. May the mysteries that we have received and will receive for us, O Lord, a token to obtain the pardon of our debts and the forgiveness of our sins, the great hope of resurrection from the dead, a new life in the kingdom of heaven with all of those who have pleased him, through His grace and mercy forever. Amen. 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 So, my Lord, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Holy, holy, you are holy, our Father in heaven. Heaven and earth are full of the greatness of your glory. Angels and men cry out to you, Holy, holy, you are holy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgave our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, to the Holy Spirit. From everlasting to everlasting and forever. Kingdom come, holy, holy, you are holy, our Father in heaven. Heaven and earth are full of the greatness of your glory. Angels and men cry out to you, holy, holy, you are holy. Bless my Lord. with every spiritual blessing in heaven, our Lord Jesus Christ. May you as blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heaven, our Lord Jesus Christ, who indeed invited us into his kingdom, who called us and drew us close to his delightful blessing, which neither passes away nor ceases nor diminish, as he declared and promised in his life-giving gospel, when he said to the blessed assembly of, the, of, of his disciples, Amen, Amen, I say unto you, whoever eats my body and drinks my blood, dwells in me and I in him, and I shall raise him up on the last day, and he shall not come into judgment, for he has indeed passed from death to life eternal. May he bless our assembly. Amen. Community and exalt our people Amen. come to be renewed by the power of these glorious holy life giving and divine mysteries. Thus, thus may you be sealed by the living sign of the Lordly Cross and be guarded from all dangers hidden or manifest now, at all times, and forever and ever. As we journey to the Sunday of Palm Sunday, prepare your hearts and minds through prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Go in the peace of Christ, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen.
Jesus.